Hey what's up guys, today I'll recap a horror comedy film, Abigail. Spoilers are coming so keep your eyes wide open and stay safe. The movie starts at a ballet recital, where 12 year old Abigail is gracefully giving her performance on stage. But little does she know, she's being watched by three shady criminals sitting in the audience. They're up to no good. Meanwhile three more are outside, a hacker ready to disable anything, a sniper waiting for trouble, and a getaway driver prepared for a fast escape. Once Abigail finishes her recital, things take a dark turn, the three inside quickly grab her, abducting her and rushing her into a van. The group drives smoothly through the streets without anyone suspecting a thing until they reach a massive, mysterious mansion. The group finally meets their boss, a cold and calculating leader named Lambert. He's the mastermind behind this whole operation, and he's got everything planned out. Lambert gives each member of the group their secret code names to hide their identities. Joey, Frank, Sammy, Dean, Peter, and Rickles are now their new names for the mission. The plan is simple, but risky. They're holding Abigail for a massive ransom. $50 million from her super rich father. Once they get the money, each member of the crew will walk away with a sweet $7 million, but they only have 24 hours to pull it off. Lambert isn't taking any chances, though. He takes all of their phones to keep things quiet and tells them one important rule. Don't let Abigail see their faces. With that, Lambert leaves, and the group knows the clock is ticking. The crooks gather together in the mansion's dimly lit living room, where they start drinking and goofing off to pass the time. It doesn't take long before things get competitive. Frank, Peter, and Sammy bet Joey that she can't figure out their pasts, but Joey surprises them. She carefully studies each of them and makes her guesses. First, she nails Frank's secret. He used to be a cop. He stiffens, surprised that Joey figured that out so easily. Then she looks at Peter and calls him out for being an enforcer for the Quebec Mafia. He tries to hide a smirk, but knows she's right. Finally, Joey turns to Sammy and says she comes from a rich family, but gets into criminal stuff just for fun. Sammy laughs, admitting Joey totally nailed it. Later on, Joey takes a break from the group and goes to check on Abigail, who is quietly sitting in her room. They share a brief but heartfelt moment. Joey tells Abigail that she has a son, but refuses to say his real name. Abigail, wanting to help, decides to call him Justin instead. Before Joey can leave, Abigail looks at her with sad eyes and says something strange. She's sorry for what's about to happen. The words leave Joey uneasy, wondering what the little girl knows. Dean, trying to act smooth, makes a weak attempt to flirt with Sammy, but she shuts him down fast, not interested at all. Feeling a bit embarrassed, he heads down to the basement to cool off, but something Something terrifying happens. An unseen figure grabs him, and before he can react, he's dragged away into the darkness. A muffled scream echoes through the mansion. Sammy hears Dean's scream and rushes to check it out. What she finds is horrifying. Dean's body is lying there, and to her shock, his head falls clean off his shoulders. Panic sets in and she screams, alerting the others. The group is now in full freakout mode. Fear takes over as they realize they are dealing with something far worse than they expected. In the chaos, Frank stumbles into Abigail's room, not realizing what he's done until it's too late. Abigail sees his face, breaking the one rule Lambert gave them. Desperate to cover his tracks, Frank pulls out his gun, pointing it at her. He demands answers, asking who her father really is. Abigail, calm despite the gun, reveals that her father is Christophe Lazar. The name instantly chills Frank to the bone. Lazar isn't just any rich guy, he's a terrifying underworld crime lord. Years ago, during Frank's time as a cop, he was assigned to a job that pitted him against Lazar. The mission was a disaster, with four of Frank's team mates brutally killed. Frank and the others had long suspected that Lazar's feared hitman, known only as Valdez, was behind the murders. Now, Frank knows they've gotten themselves into a nightmare they may not survive. Joey and Rickles sneak away from the others to talk in private. They're both starting to get suspicious of Frank. Joey suggests that maybe Frank is actually Valdez, the mysterious hitman they've all feared, and that he's secretly picking off the group one by one to steal the ransom for himself. Rickles, nervous, agrees they need to get out of the mansion before it's too late. But before they can escape, Rickles meets a gruesome end. The same unseen attacker from before comes out of nowhere and mauls Rickles to death, leaving Joey horrified and more desperate than ever. Meanwhile, Frank pulls Peter aside, suggesting something even darker. He thinks their best bet now is to just kill Abigail and cut their losses, but Joey won't let that happen. She steps in, determined to protect the girl, even though the situation keeps getting stranger. They all head to Abigail's room, but instead of the scared little girl they expect, Abigail reveals a terrifying truth. She's a centuries-old vampire and was always Valdez, the legendary killer they've been talking about. The shock is overwhelming as Abigail transforms before their eyes and lunges at the group with deadly speed. Somehow they manage to escape her room, but the nightmare isn't over. When they try to flee the mansion, the security system kicks in. Every door and window slams shut, sealing them inside with the deadly vampire, and the clock is ticking. The group is in full panic mode now, trying to figure out how to deal with a vampire like Abigail. They scramble
scramble for ideas, reaching for all the classic vampire stuff. Garlic cloves, crosses, silver bullets, and wooden stakes. It feels like something out of an old horror movie, but they're desperate and willing to try anything. They plan an ambush, hoping to catch Abigail off guard, but when they find her, she's creepily dancing with Dean's lifeless body. Frank takes his shot, aiming straight for her head, but Abigail just shrugs it off and heals like nothing happened. Things go from bad to worse when she grabs Peter's cross necklace and starts stabbing him with his own symbol of protection. Sammy tries her hand at stopping the vampire with garlic, but that plan fails miserably. Abigail laughs it off and bites Sammy, sending her tumbling into a pool of bodies, the remains of all of Abigail's past victims. The sight is horrifying, and it's clear this vampire has been at this for a long time. Just when it seems like all hope is lost, Joey steps up. She remembers the tranquilizer they used to knock Abigail out when they first kidnapped her. She quickly grabs it and manages to bring Abigail down, finally stopping her wild attacks. They quickly lock the vampire inside a cage, but the group knows this isn't over yet. They've trapped her for now, but how long can they keep her there? When Abigail finally wakes up, Frank tries to intimidate her, but Abigail isn't phased at all. Instead, she starts revealing the truth about each of them, exposing their real identities and secrets. The group listens in shock as she calls them out one by one. First, she looks at Sammy, whose real name is Jessica. Abigail smirks as she tells the group that Jessica ran away after stealing from her parents. Next, she turns to Peter, or Terrence, and reminds him of his past as nothing more than a thug for the mafia, a brute who did the dirty work. Then, she drops the bombshell on Frank. His real name is Adam, and he wasn't just some random guy. They all worked for Abigail's father before she killed them. She left their bodies mutilated for Adam to find, cruelly playing with him. Finally, she turns to Joey, who Abigail reveals is really named Ana Lucia. Joey's past as a former army medic is brought into the light, but it's not a heroic story. Abigail gleefully reminds her of the time Joey, addicted to morphine, accidentally nicked the artery of a major crime figure. That mistake is how Abigail and her father first learned about Joey, and it's also why Joey lost custody of her son. The truth is clear now. Each of them was connected to Lazar, Abigail's terrifying father, and they weren't chosen by accident. Lambert brought them here on purpose, delivering them to Abigail as nothing more than food. But Joey, still holding on to some hope, tells Abigail that she thinks Abigail is doing all this for her father's love. Abigail, though, just laughs coldly and says, Lazar never loved me. I just enjoy playing with my food. The group is left reeling, knowing they've been outsmarted by the vampire from the start. Frank is put in charge of watching Abigail, but things quickly go wrong. Abigail, being the sneaky vampire she is, breaks out of the cage and grabs Frank by the throat, trying to choke him. As Frank struggles to breathe, Joey rushes to the windows and starts smashing them open, letting sunlight pour into the room. This actually works. The sunlight burns Abigail, and she shrieks in pain. The group panics and splits up, each trying to find an escape route, but things take a dark turn when Sammy's vampirism fully kicks in. Abigail, with her eerie powers, begins controlling Sammy like a puppet. Under Abigail's control, Sammy attacks Peter, and before anyone can stop her, she drains his blood, leaving him lifeless on the floor. Just when Sammy is about to come for Joey and Frank next, Joey thinks fast. She grabs something shiny and uses it to reflect the sunlight straight at Sammy. The light hits Sammy hard, and in an instant, she explodes into a mess of bloody chunks, leaving Joey and Frank horrified but still alive. For now, Joey and Frank are determined to find a way to shut down the mansion's security system. As they search, they stumble upon a hidden control room where Lambert is waiting. To their shock, Lambert reveals that he is also a vampire. He admits that he brought the criminals there just to feed them to Abigail, and there was never going to be any ransom money. Lambert offers Frank a dark choice. He can become a vampire too, and together they could take down Lazar and Abigail. Frank, seeing a chance for power, accepts the offer. Lambert bites him, turning him into a vampire, and in a twist of fate, Frank stakes Lambert right after, causing a massive explosion. With newfound strength, Frank sets his sights on both Joey and Abigail, planning to take over Lazar's criminal empire. But when he confronts Abigail, a fierce battle breaks out. In the heat of the fight, Frank drinks some of Abigail's blood, making him even stronger. In a shocking moment, Frank turns on Joey and bites her too, intending to turn her into a vampire as well. But Joey fights back fiercely, refusing to let Frank control her. Abigail steps in and tells Joey that the only way to break free is to kill the vampire that bit her. Realizing they must work together, Joey and Abigail team up, overpowering Frank in an intense struggle. They manage to stake him, causing him to burst into a shower of ash. In an incredible twist, Joey is quickly cured of her vampire bite, and they both stand victorious, knowing they've defeated a powerful enemy. As night falls, Joey thinks she's finally free and gets ready to leave the mansion, but out of nowhere, she comes face to face with Lazar himself. He has a cold smile and tells Joey that he has gone by many names, and you can probably guess what his most 
most famous one is, Lazar raises his weapon, ready to end Joey's life. Just when it seems all hope is lost, Abigail steps in to defend Joey. She tells Lazar that Joey was the one who helped save her from Frank. This surprises Lazar, and after a tense moment, he decides to let Joey live. But there's a catch. Now he and Abigail are going after Joey's son, Caleb, whom Abigail knows all about. Joey's heart races as she realizes she must act fast. She jumps into a van and quickly drives away, determined to find Caleb before it's too late. The night is dark, but Joey's hope shines bright as she sets off on her mission to save her son from the clutches of evil. Which movie should we recap next? Drop your suggestions in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more movie recaps. Thanks for watching. Produced by Warner Talks.